Hello and welcome to Quick Tips, the WooCommerce video series. In this video, I'll show you how you can customize the WooCommerce shop page using Elementor Theme Builder. Elementor Theme Builder is a part of Elementor Pro plugin. So in order to use the Elementor Theme Builder, you will need Elementor Pro plugin. Here, I'm logged into the dashboard of the WooCommerce website. This is just a demo WooCommerce website that I have created using WooCommerce and the Elementor plugin. In this demo website, I'm using Hello Elementor theme. You may be using other theme on your WooCommerce website, and this is the default layout of the shop page on this demo website. You may have slightly different shop page layout on your WooCommerce website. You may be using any other theme. Now we are going to customize this shop page. I have some demo products already created on this WooCommerce website, and I'm using Elementor and Elementor Pro plugin. You will see it here. Elementor and Elementor Pro plugin. I have already published a detailed video on how to create a professional e-commerce website using WooCommerce and Elementor plugin. This video is more than eight hours long. This is a step-by-step -step video. If you want to watch this video, I'll give you the link in the description box. So let's go back. We are on the dashboard. Now let's go to templates and under templates, you will see the option theme builder. You will get this option only if you have Elementor Pro plugin installed. Now this theme builder is used to create different layouts on your WordPress website. In the left hand panel, you will see which layouts you can manage using Elementor theme builder. You can create header, footer, single post, single page. Archive is nothing but the blog page. Search results, single product page. Product archive is nothing but the shop page or the layout for different category pages. Loop item and error 404. Now we are going to use the product archive template to create the shop page. So let's go to product archive. Here you will see one default layout is already there, which I tried to create before. You may not have this layout here. So we are going to start from the scratch. Here in the top left hand, you will see add new, click on it. We are going to create from the scratch. So I'm going to close this one. Now at the top, I want to add banner or the heading section. So I'm going to click on the plus sign and select single column section. Let's change the layout. Change the background color according to your website requirement. You can change the background color. I'm going to use this one. And let's add some padding here. Click on the plus sign and here you can add archive title. So if you are using categories, then it will show category name at the top. So this is going to be the title of the archive. And I'm going to let's change the color for the title. Let's use this one. It is in HTML H1 tag. Go to style settings. If you want to change the size, you can change the size. I'm going to change the size here. Go to archive title and you will see include text. If you want to add any text before the category or the archive title, you can use that one. Here you will see the option before. If you want to add text before the title, you can add it here after or fallback. Fallback is nothing but if there is no category or any title in the dynamic track, then it is going to use this title shop. If there is nothing, then it is going to use shop. All right, let's go to this section and let's add some more padding here. Let's center align it. All right, so this is going to be the title. Now below that, I want to add the section where I'm going to show the products as well as I'm going to add a sidebar. So click on the plus sign and select two column section. Let's use this one. In the left hand panel, we are going to add some filters. And in the right hand side, we are going to add products which will be shown on the shop page. Let's add some padding to the section. Right now, click on the plus sign here. And in the left hand panel, you will see which items you can add on the shop page. Archive product, archive description. If you have description for category, then it will show the description. And this is the archive title, which we have already used here. So we're going to use archive products, drag it and drop it here. Now you will see all the products are showing in this section. Now we have some settings here, go to advanced. And this is the message which will be shown if there is no product in that particular category. It seems we can not find what you are looking for. So this will be the nothing found message. Go to content and allow order. You can allow the order. You will see the sorting here, default sorting. This is nothing but the sorting options. Sort by popularity, sort by average rating, sort by latest, low to high, high to low. If you do not want this option, you can simply disable it from here. And this is show result count, you will see it here. If you do not want that, you can disable it from here. 
All right, now let's go to style settings and you will see the column gap is 20 pixel and the rows gap is 40 pixels. So this is nothing but the rows gap and this is the column gap. Alignment is set to center. You will see if I change it to center, the text and the button will go to center. Then we have settings for the image. Border type is default, none, solid. If I add solid, you will see the border around this image. Let's change it to default. The title, this is the title. You can change the title settings from here. Let's customize it. So you will see the change in the color for the title. And you can also change the typography for the title. So you can change the size of the title. You can also change the uppercase, change it to uppercase, lowercase or capitalize. Spacing between the title, you will see the change in the spacing. Then we have rating. If you add rating, it will show the rating here. And this will be the color for the rating. Then we have price. This is the price and these are the settings for the price. You can change the color for the price. Let's change to blue. So this is going to be the color for the pricing. And you can also change the size of the price regular price this is the regular price and this is the sale price so if there is any discount going on it will show two different prices this is regular and this is the sale price for this product we have only one sale price so there is no regular price or discount on this product so for the regular price you can change the color like this you will see the change in the color then we have button this is the button and these are the settings for the button you can change the background color for the button all right, so this is how it is going to look. Typography for the button. Then we have border for the button. You will see the border around the button. Then we have a view cart. Okay, so we do not have view cart right now. When you add the product to the cart, it will show the view cart. Let's go to box. And these are the box settings. Currently, we do not have any border around the box. You can add the border or you can add the border shadow. You will see the border shadow like this. So these are the settings for the border. Add the border radius. You will see the radius here. Okay, we have added box shadow here. Then pagination, you will see the pagination at the bottom. If there are more than 10 products, it is going to show the pagination. And sale flash, you will see the sale flash here. This is nothing but the discount going on for that particular product. Okay, if you want, you can change the color for the sale flash. Let's use another color. You will see the change in the color here. So you can customize the color for the cell flash from here. The, these are the settings for the nothing found message. All right, under advanced tab, you can adjust the margin and padding settings. And you can also have motion effect, transform. You can also change the background for the entire section. Then we have border for the entire section. So these are the three different archive elements that you can add on the product archive template. Now let's publish it. And we will see how does this look when you click on publish you will see the option add condition so we need to add the condition where you want to use this product archive template if you want to use only for the shop page then you can select shop page and this template will be used for the shop page only if you want it for all the archives then you can select all product archive as click on save and close all right now let's go to the website let's refresh it and you will see the new template is used for the shop page. Now let's say I want to add product filter in the left hand panel. Now I'm going to use a third party plugin to add product filter. So let's go to dashboard and go to plugins and click on add new plugin. Search for filter everything. This is a filter plugin that you can use on the WooCommerce website. I have a separate video published on how to use the filter everything plugin and add WooCommerce product filter. If you want to watch this detailed video, I'll give you the link in the description box. So let's go back. This is the plugin filter everything product filter and WordPress filter. Click on install and click on activate. Now in the left hand panel, you will see filters. Click on it and click on add filter set. Let's name it as product filter and from the drop down select products so it will be used for the products only and click on add filter now we are going to add some filters here you will see the option here product categories so this will be the filter for the categories let's name it as categories 
and let's add the var name for the url that will be categories again and it will be a checkbox all right so i'm going to keep it as checkbox now click on add new filter and from the drop down if you want to add product tags filter then you can use the product tags you can also use product type different types of products are there simple product or the variable product if you have variable product then you can also use the product filter using attributes such as size color now i want to add filter product using the pricing so i'm going to select the option custom field numeric and meta key will be price filter title will be price and var name will also be price and here you will see the option numeric range so i'm going to select numeric range for this one okay so we have got two different types of product filters click on publish now here you will see the short code that we can use so i'm going to copy this short code and let's go back here click on the plus sign and search for short code drag it and drop it here and add the short code here publish it let's go to shop page and you will see a filter has been added here in the left hand panel so at the top we have categories filter and then we have price filter so if i select woman then it will show the products from the woman category and we also have this default sorting if you want you can sort by price if i select high to low you will see the products arranged using the price high to low you can go to low to high it will show the products pricing low to high so in the left hand panel you can add different elements if you want to add contact form you can also add contact form or you can also add your promotional products in the left hand panel for example i want to add some products here so i'll search for products let's add it just below this one and you will see some products here how many columns let's say i want to add one column and three rows so it will show three products here let's adjust the size of the column so it is going to show three products and you can filter them using the queries we have different queries here latest products or products on the sale feature product manual selection so you can select the products manually or you can use upsell cross sell that will be on the single product page so i'm going to use latest product and you can also use terms let's say men so it will show the product from the men's category and you can order them by date and descending order go to style settings and center align it and again you can customize this one according to your website requirement let's make it two so it is going to show only two products publish it let's go back refresh it and you will see the products added in the left hand column this layout will also be applied to different categories if i go to this product page and if i go to category this is the category if i select that one you will see the same layout will be used for this category let's go to shop page now this default layout is using four columns so let's go to customize here go to woocommerce and go to product catalog and here you will see the option how many rows and columns you want to show on the shop page so currently it is set to four products so i'm going to change it to three and publish it and below that you will see rows per page is set to four so it will be three by four so if you have 12 products it will show 12 products on the shop page after that it will use pagination to go to the next page let's go to the website again go to shop page and let's refresh it and now you will see three columns layout currently on this demo website i have 10 products so it shows only 10 products here so from here you can adjust the number of columns that you want to show on the archive template so this is how you can customize the woocommerce shop page using elementor theme builder so that's it for now see you in the next video do not forget to subscribe to my channel to get more quick tips about online softwares and tools if you have any questions, please leave us message in comment section. And press the like button if you like the video. Thanks for watching Quick Tips.